Hi and welcome. I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel or blog for another card tutorial. I'm using the Concord and Ninth Butterfly Love Stamps and Dies along with the new Honey Bee Stamps Embossing Powders in this video. So here's the Concord and Ninth Butterfly Love Stamp that includes a turnabout stamp a large and small butterfly along with several sentiments. And here's the coordinating die set. So I've already aligned my stamp and I recommend um, going to Concord and Ninth's website if you need help with aligning your stamps. They have great videos over there for that. I've laid down a piece of 110 pound cardstock in my stamp positioning tool and I'm covering it with an anti-static powder. Now you see me lay down quite a bit, but I am going to be doing a lot of heat embossing and I want to make sure that I don't have any, you know, stray specks of embossing powder once I start heat setting. So I'm using my Versa Mark ink to ink the stamp up several times before laying down any embossing powder. And I just want to make sure that I have solid stamped images before I start laying that powder down. I'm starting with the Honey Bee Stamps Be True Embossing Powder. It's a dark embossing powder with turquoise and silver glitter. It's so pretty. So a little bit about these um, three embossing powders from Honey Bee Stamps. It's called the Bee's Knees um, Trio. It's an embossing powder by WOW, but it was an exclusive for Honey Bee Stamps. It coordinates with the Bee's Knees 6x6 paper pad and enamel dots that she has on her website, which I absolutely love. So when I'm laying down my embossing powder, I like to make sure that I have all my images covered and then I use a brush to clean up and then I heat set. So here's the heat embossed panel. We're finished with that. It's so beautiful. Now I went ahead and I picked three Distress Oxide inks to match those enamel dots so that I could stamp the large butterfly from the Butterfly Love stamp set. I'm using Chipped Sapphire, Peacock Feathers, and Mustard Seed. And this is one of those times I'm just going to take my dauber. I'm going to go directly to the stamp with the dauber. And I'm not going to worry about the inks overlapping or anything like that. I'm not being too fussy with this. I'm just laying ink down and stamping it. Um, the inks will blend together as you start stamping it. And I'm also going to take my Nuvo aqua shimmer brush and go over certain parts of that just to add a little shimmer and it does help to blend that together a little bit better. So I wanted to do a few butterflies to, on the inside of the card so using memento ink in the color teal zeal I'm just going to use the butterflies from the turnabout stamp and I'm going to stamp them one time and I'm just doing this on 80 pound Nina cardstock and I stamp twice just to make sure I get a nice coverage. So once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my sentiment and stamp that for the inside of my card. And I am using the sentiment um, Change is Good and I'm stamping it with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I die cut a vellum heart, uh, the butterfly and the body for the butterfly. I had a piece of scrap paper that was already foiled and used it for the body. Now we have all the pieces together and I want to go ahead and start to assemble the card. So I'm going to use some Gina K Connect glue to put the foiled uh, body onto the butterfly. So I have a piece of 80 pound Nina cardstock here. It is eight and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. I'm scoring it at two and one eighth of an inch. I flip it, score it again at two, one, two and one eighth of an inch. And then I fold along those score lines to create our gatefold card. So I'm going to take our heat embossed panel and cut it into two pieces each measuring two inches wide by five and three eighths of an inch tall. And I want those to cover those two uh, front flaps of our gatefold card. Now, here's a little trick that I do when I'm cutting something like this. I want 
the center of my panels to line up. In other words, I want those butterflies to line up. So I cut my panel in the center, right down the middle, and then I back them up to each other like you see I just did there. Now, you can even put some um, removable or repositionable adhesive on the in between them to hold them in place. And now all I have to do is cut them because I know they're going to line up. So I cut these to two inches wide and then I trim the ends off of them so they'll be five and three eighths of an inch tall. So we're gonna use our ATG gun and just adhere those to the front of the card. I'm gonna center those up on each uh, flap and then we're gonna be done with this part. Now I do need to go ahead and trim down the uh, sentiment panel for the inside of the card that we stamped the butterflies on. So I'm going to just trim that down enough so that when I put it inside the card, then I don't have to worry about the flaps not closing down completely. So just keep that in mind if you do a panel to go on the inside to trim it down enough so that your card will close completely. So I'm just gonna center that up on the inside of the card and then I'm going to take some 3D mounting foam and start adding that to the back of the stamped butterfly. And I'm going to take some silver thread and wrap that up and place it onto that 3D mounting foam. So then I just center that butterfly up onto the heart and attach it. And then I add two pieces of mounting foam to the back of the heart, only to the right side. And I adhere it to the front of our card panel centered up. Now I'm just gonna finish this off with a few sequins and then I do believe we'll be coming to the end of this video. So we use the Concord and Ninth Butterfly Love Turnabout Stamps and Dies and the Honey Bee Stamps the Bees, Knees, Embossing Powders. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll come back for more. So if you could please click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of new content. Also, if you hop over to my website and become a subscriber, you'll have access to my videos before they are published to the public. So I want to encourage you to leave comments below. And as always, please know how much I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And until next time, my crafty friends, thanks for joining me and keep crafting.